Hi guys, welcome to the last installment of Cornerstone Inspirations Holy Week Edition. My name is Pastor Raymond. Thank you so much for joining me today. If you haven't done it yet, please like and share us on Facebook or you can subscribe to our YouTube channel, Cornerstone Philippines. Don't forget to hit the bell so you know when new content is available. Today is called Black Saturday. Bakit ba siya tinawag na Black Saturday? The answer is, black is the color of mourning. Pero huwag kayong magalala, hindi ako nagmumorn dahil ako ay nakasuot ng itim. Para sa atin ang mga Christians, we do not mourn or we are not sad on this day because we understand and we know about the finished work of Jesus Christ. So, kung aalalahanin man natin ang araw na ito, it must be a time of appreciation and worship unto the Lord because of what He has done. You know, much is written about what happened during the days leading up to the crucifixion of Christ and also right after that. But here's something that you will find out. There is not much written about what happened on the Saturday. Ito yung araw na inoobserve natin at sinicelebrate po natin. In all gospel accounts, we do encounter a certain character. His man is Joseph of Arimathea. And in all four gospels, nando ng kwento ng taong ito. And halos pare-parehas sila ng pagkakalahad or pagkakakwento patungkol sa ginawa ni Joseph. So, tignan natin ang Mark chapter 15 verse 42 to 47. It was preparation day, that is the day before the Sabbath. So, as evening approached, Joseph of Arimathea, a prominent member of the council, who was himself waiting for the kingdom of God, went boldly to Pilate and asked for Jesus' body. Pilate was surprised to hear that he was already dead. Summoning a centurion, he asked him if Jesus had already died. When he learned from the centurion that it was so, he gave the body to Joseph. So Joseph bought some linen cloth, took down the body, wrapped it in the linen, and placed it in a tomb cut out of rock. Then he rolled a stone against the entrance of the tomb, and that time Mary Magdalene and Mary the mother of Joseph saw where he was laid. So aside from Joseph, walang masyadong ibang details, walang mention about the disciples, you know, or, or, or any other character. You know, siya lang talaga ang may prominent uh, mention, you know, in the Gospels about what happened after Jesus' death. Si Luke, meron siyang dinagdag ng konti. Siguro makakatulong ito para maintindihan natin kung bakit nga naman wala nga talaga silang ginagawa uh, during this time, referring to the disciples. In Luke chapter 23, verse 55 hanggang 56, it says, The women who had come with Jesus from Galilee followed Joseph and saw the tomb and how his body was laid in it. Then they went home and prepared spices and perfumes. But they rested on the Sabbath. Ah, yun pala. In obedience to the commandment. So they prepared their spices and perfumes because they wanted to prepare his body but they were not able to do it because they had to observe the Sabbath. So the question here is this. Okay, they wanted to observe the Sabbath. You know, Mary and the uh, and and the others who were with, you know, Jesus at this time. Pero sa palagay ba ninyo kung ikaw ay nawalan ng taong napakalapit sa iyo, makakapag-rest ka ba talaga? Makakapag-observe ka ba talaga ng Sabbath? Would you still be able to follow on the traditions? Most likely hindi. Kasi Hindi mo alam eh kung anong mararamdaman mo. Hindi mo rin alam kung ano ang dapat mong isipin at this time. And maybe, you know, the lack of detail in the Bible about what's going on with the disciples and the followers of Jesus was there to really mask their true feelings. They were in mourning, some of them were angry, some of them were confused, some of them were afraid. Pero kahit magkaganon pa man, there is still something interesting that happened during this time, during this Saturday. 
Tignan natin kung ano yon. Matthew 27 verse 62 hanggang 66. The next day, the one after preparation day. So, we're just trying to establish, you know, the gospel writer is trying to establish, you know, the, the dates, you know, that these things were happening. Okay? The chief priests and the Pharisees went to Pilate. Sir, they said, We remember that while he was still alive, that deceiver said, they are referring to Jesus. After three days, I will rise again. So give the order for the tomb to be made secure until the third day. Otherwise, his disciples may come and steal the body and tell the people that he has been raised from the dead. This last deception will be worse than the first. Take a guard, Pilate answered. Go make the tomb as secure as you know how. So they went and made the tomb secure by putting a seal on the stone and posting the guard. You know, I really find this very, very interesting. You know why? For several reasons, okay? We're talking about the chief priests and the Pharisees. Number one, they broke their own law when it comes to the Sabbath. They were supposed to be the ones who should be leading the people in the observance of it. Kaya lang, dahil nga, kay Jesus Christ, they were the first ones to break it by going to Pilate and actually when he said, Sige, pumunta kayo sa tomb at gawin ninyo ang dapat ninyong gawin para masecure ninyo ito. So that's breaking the rule. That's breaking the law right there. They're not supposed to work. They're not supposed to do anything. Second, it means that they were actually paying attention to the words of Jesus. Jesus mentions it several times. Yes, he's going to die, but he's going to be raised on the third day. So, kung ilang beses man nila itong narinig, tumatak talaga ito sa kanilang mga isipan. And now, you know, they are coming before Pilate because that is the issue that they are very much concerned about. And the third thing is that they probably exhibited more faith than the disciples could muster at the time. Kaya lang, syempre, ang kanilang pananampalataya o pagtitiwala o paniniwala dun sa mangyayari kay Jesus after the third day is really based on a suspicion. Kasi sabi nga doon, baka may gawing hindi tama ang mga disciples. Pumunta sila sa tomb, nakawin ang katawan, itago ito, at ikalat sa mga tao at sabihin, Tignan ninyo, nabuhay muli si Jesus. Wala siya sa loob ng tomb na ito. Well, that's really quite interesting right there. But when it comes to the disciples and the, and the followers of Jesus, their silence truly is deafening. But I believe that it is for this reason that with nothing much said about what the disciples did during this time, that we can actually learn a lot from their experience. Kahit walang nasabi patungkol sila, meron pa rin tinuturo ang Panginoon Diyos patungkol dito. And this is the first one. That when darkness came, they failed to shine their light. Dumating ang kadiliman. Bakit? Namatay si Jesus eh. Yung liwanag nila na nagbibigay sa kanila ng direksyon at inspirasyon na wala sa kanila. Darkness came, but they failed to shine their own light. Nakalimutan nila yung sinabi sa kanila ni Jesus, You are salt and light of the earth. Kailan ba mas maliwanag ang ilaw? Hindi ba't kapag ka madilim? And they did not see it that way. They failed in becoming God's representatives on this earth. Na pwede nating sabihin, eh, Pastor, siguro naman, you know, maawa ka rin naman talaga sa mga disciples. Kasi, hindi naman nila alam yung alam natin ngayon. Eh. They are the first-hand witnesses of what happened to Jesus. Well, maybe. Pwede nga naman, siguro kung ganun. Pero sana pagating sa atin, dapat mas alam na natin kung paano tayo magre-respond kung meron mang time ng kadiliman. Kagaya ng nararanasan natin ngayon sa panahon ng isang pandemic or sa tinatawag na COVID-19. I believe that we should actually take advantage of the opportunity that is given to us. Pag-isipan ninyo ito. Okay? Think about this. When will we get to celebrate Holy Week 
during quarantine again. I'm not expecting na next year may quarantine anuman. I'm believing that God will do something, that God will take this disease away, you know, from every person, from every country and every nation on this planet. I believe we are going to be healed and rid of, of this disease. So, I'm not expecting another quarantine. So, this may be a first, but this may be the only time for you, our generation or our lifetime, to experience such a situation. Sana kapatid, huwag mong sayangin ang pagkakataon na sa gitna ng kadiliman na nangyayari sa paligid natin, ikaw naman ay magliwanag. Pangalawa, the disciples drifted into an indeterminate state, otherwise known as limbo. They were drifting into limbo. Alam ba ninyo, sa Tagalog, ang ibig sabihin ng limbo ay kawalan. Okay? And actually, it is a very dangerous state because you're moving from having the ability to make rational choices into losing all ability to make rational choices. Kaya nga madalas kapag nakita tayo ng mga tao na uh, yung sila ay nagluluksa o nagdadalamhati, hindi ba't nakikita natin na madalas nakatulala sila? Yung baga nakatingin sila sa malayo pero parang wala naman talagang silang tinitignan. Mukhang malalim ang kanilang iniisip pero wala naman talagang silang iniisip. Pag wala kang pera, hindi ba minsan ganyan yung itsura mo, di ba? Parang tulala ka kasi hindi mo alam. Saan ako kukuha ulit ng peras? Paano ako magkakaroon ng pera? And you know what? It's a very dangerous state to be in. But I want to encourage you. You have to remember that you and I have control over what we choose to believe in or what path we will take. Sabi nga ng Bible, for, uh, 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 7, For God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. I want you to be encouraged by those words. The third thing is this. The disciples felt it was the end of the road. Pastor, how sure are you that that is how they felt, that it is the end of the road for them? You know, we're going to read the scripture and this happened a day after Saturday. So this Sunday, okay? On this particular Sunday, Jesus appears to his disciples. And this is how it is described, you know, what they are feeling. John chapter 20 verse 19. Then the same day at evening, being the first day of the week. So that's Sunday. When the doors were shut, where the disciples were assembled, for fear of the Jews. Hmm. Jesus came and stood in the midst and said to them, Peace be with you. I don't think there is going to be a difference between how they are being described here and how they were on that Saturday when it was a Sabbath. So, it seems like they were already thinking, tapos na tayo lahat. This is the end of the road for us. Hindi na natin alam kung ano ang kasunod nito. But the reality is, it was not the end. Actually, it was the beginning of a new chapter in their lives. And not just of their lives, but for us as well. Ito ang nagmark ng beginning ng paglaganap at pagkalat ng mabuting balita. Hindi lang para sa mga Hudyo, kundi para sa buong sangkatao. So let me conclude with this. Please do not let this day slip by without thanking the Lord for the gift of His Son, Jesus Christ. Today we humble ourselves before the Lord, but we do not mourn a loss. In fact, we celebrate because we know that He is alive. We celebrate and rejoice because we know the truth about God's plan of redemption. Alam natin, nababasa natin, it is now in full effect in our lives. So I encourage you, prepare your hearts, prepare your minds for tomorrow we are going to celebrate. I want to personally invite you to our online worship service. That's going to be tomorrow at 10.15 a.m. I hope that you will join us. Prepare yourself for great and amazing things. 
use this opportunity to draw closer unto the Lord. The darkness may be out there, but it can never defeat the light that is in us. Sana kapatid, magliwanag ka ng husto. Dahil naniniwala ako, this is a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity. God bless you guys.